blood that Jesus shed on Calvary.
thank you, eternal God, Lord. Oh, your blood will never lose its power, God, eternal Lord. And we thank you, God, for your presence, God, eternal Lord. We thank you for your promises, God, eternal Lord, that are all, Lord, uh, promises that we stand on, God, eternal Lord. Though what the devil can say, O oh Lord God, eternal Lord, do, Lord God, we know that you are faithful, God, eternal Lord. That's why you are Melchizedek, Lord, King of righteousness, God, eternal Lord. And we know, eternal God, that you'll never fail us, God, eternal Lord. That blood, O oh Lord, that you shed on Calvary tree, O oh Lord, God, eternal Lord, we know way back thousand years now God but we know it still have its power God eternal Lord the power its power to transform God eternal its power oh Lord God it to set us free from all the fears Lord of the of this world the evil world that is dying God eternal Lord and we thank you God eternal for your grace and mercy Lord for revealing these things unto us, God eternal Lord, for showing us the way, God eternal Lord, in this dying age, God. We thank you for your grace once again. Being here, Lord, it's a, it's a grand privilege to us, God eternal Lord. We are, oh Lord, a peculiar people, Lord, a holy nation, God. That's grace, God, to, unto us, Lord. We thank you and we commit the service unto you, Lord. And we believe, Lord, that you'll do wondrous, Lord, in our midst. In Jesus Christ's name, we pray and ask that. Amen. 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 You may have your seat. We'll have song items first. Amen. We can be collecting the offerings as well. God bless you, saints. I just want to thank the Lord for adding one more year in my life. It's by your grace and mercy that I'm still here today. Should I be lost and die? No part of man could save me. No instruments could raise me. Only your grace could rescue me. How great is your name? Nobody but you, Lord. Nobody but you, Lord. How great is your name, oh God. You deserve all the praise. Nobody but you, Lord. I depend on you. It's by
Shalom, saints. Um, before I pray, I just want to share a testimony. Amen. Um, at work, there's like this a regulatory exam that we normally have to 
get before we can go to the next level of senior management. So now I spoke about it that I want to do it last year, but I never really planned how I asked HR if the company will pay and all those things and they say yes, okay. But this year I never really was not considering to do it. So one of my colleagues was uh, doing it and actually I actually bumped into material at the, what do you call it, a photocopy machine and I just went to him and I said, hey, why are you leaving your things there? And I didn't know it's him. And he said, oh, sorry. And then he went to fetch it. And then just to cut it short, he, I asked him how he enrolled. And then he told me about the department that will assist at work. And I enrolled. We did the workshop. We then had to write the exam on the 1st of August. Um, it was, it was difficult, it's a difficult exam, just to show how difficult it is. People fail it 12 times. Yes, um, and, and, and I think last weekend when Pastor was preaching about you know, transformation of your mind and how you must think, and, and that helped me because then I started being more positive and believing that I can actually accomplish it. So then on the first we went to write, um, when I got there, I was the first person in the exam room. I got there, I sat down and I prayed. And then the exam came, I think I got there like 10 past eight, nine o'clock, we started. It's two and a half. It's, it's, it's very difficult and analytical and all that. So quarter past nine, stomach starts running. <laughs> I don't know if it was nerves or what was happening, but something just happened. I called the invigilator, say, my sister, I need to go now. <laughs> and she says, you can't go because it's with the, with the first 80 minutes of the exam. I had to hold myself. And now I can't think. I'm focusing here, I'm focusing there, because I know time is running. OK. Eventually, half past came. She said, I can go. I went. So the exam has 80 questions. When at 11 o'clock, 30 minutes to go, I'm at 50 something. I still need to do plus minus 20 something questions. And I take a deep breath, I say, okay, it's fine. Let me do what I can do and leave the rest to God. And then I went, I went, I went, I went, I went. And then they said, it's finished. I gave them, I didn't complete like six questions. I didn't finish. I handed in, and then I left. But deep down in me, I had that thing, no, even if I didn't finish, I passed here. And I came home and I told my wife, I actually maybe called her, and even the guy that I was writing with from work, I said, yo, even if they say I failed, I will accept it, but I'm still confident that I, this, the ones that I answered, I was sure. Okay, on Friday we got the results and I passed. Like, I just want to say, I just want to thank God because really it, it might look like you are smart or whatever, but I, I, it's not because of that. I know it's because of the hand of God in the whole thing. Because the people that I was writing with, actually when I got there, the second guy asked me, is it it's your first attempt, ne? And I said yes, but I didn't ask him. But for him to ask me like that, I knew it's not his first attempt. And because they already know each other. When they go write that exam, they already know, me. ah, my friend, you are back, you know. And I really just want to thank God because that I didn't finish. I was sick in the exam. Because even in the exam, during the exam, uh, after I went to the bathroom, I still felt the runny tummy. But I had to really push and fight. And, and for me to get it, I really, really want to say, God, you are amazing. You are really a God who is always there for us. So just a little uh, something for my children at school. Believe, believe, believe. Never doubt. Just believe. And like Pastor said, prepare as well. I never sleep late for exams in my life, but I had to sleep very late. <laughs> I was even having like, you know, coffee and all these things to make myself awake in the morning. 
But yeah, prepare and believe. Amen. Let's pray for the offering. Heavenly Father, we give you the praises, the honor, and the glory. We thank you, Lord, for all the abilities you give to us, Lord, for us to be able to start businesses, for us to be able to work, for us to be able to get that income. It's just your grace upon our lives. Lord, we thank you for the incomes that we get, oh Father. And Lord, we are coming here because it's not ours, oh God. It is yours, Lord. Your children have brought the tithes and offerings to just show you that, Lord, it is only up to you, Lord. It is only you who make it possible for us, oh Father. Bless them, oh Father God. Continue to enlarge their territory. Continue to be there for them, oh Lord. Everything, Lord, we commit in your hands, even as we go to the preaching of the word, oh Father, we commit your, your son who will be standing here, Lord. We commit the word in your capable hands. May you bless your people, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. How wonderful God is. Amen. You may just uh, stand now as we'll be preparing for the word as well. Amen. Jesus on the main line. Tell him what you want. Amen. Amen. How many believe is here? Amen. He's on the main line.
voice of peace. Amen. As we'll be welcoming the word. Amen. Great is thy faithfulness. Enjoy his presence, amen, with our hands up, amen. 
Blessed be the name of the Lord. Uh, we can give another hand of appreciation for them. Thank you, Jesus. Faithfulness is so great. That's why we are here this morning. Great is the faithfulness of our Lord. Our lives depend on that faithfulness. Amen. Every morning he makes his mercies new again. And that's why our heart feels like coming to him and say, thank you, Lord, for what you have done. May God bless you all. What a great time to be in his presence. I greet you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I trust that we are all happy and doing well in his presence. And believe the words that were spoken by David the king are still ringing in our heart. We are always happy when we come in the house of the Lord. Amen. You may have your seat for some few minutes before we get to the word, um, we have a, a, a good baby to, to, to dedicate this morning, uh, the sister Shalom and Brother Blessing uh, have uh, another baby <laughs> for us to dedicate. Time, I don't know how to greet them. The husband is blessing, the wife is shalom. So, <laughs> so <laughs> I believe that the blessings and the shalom of God is in your home as well. And uh, we thank God for blessing them with uh, this another wonderful boy. I think he's going to be like the Paul who <laughs> they had a Paul during the lockdown. Now they were proving to us that it was just not because of lockdown. Even after, they can still fulfill the word of God, say multiply, you know. We are happy to have this little baby and thanking God for protecting the mother during uh, this uh, difficult time. You know, pregnancy is not an easy time for women. It's a great miracle that uh, almost they give their lives so that they may bring life here on earth. May the name of the Lord be blessed. I think uh, the baby is here. It's his uh, first day at church. So we want to have him uh, at the altar with the parents. May, can I have that song, uh, brothers, there at the back? Uh, before uh, and the brothers there will escort the couple here and the family uh, we we have a scripture to read uh, for such to honor this life that God has brought here on earth it's a, it's a great uh, moment to uh, inaugurate the coming of a life here on earth because uh, the, the world uh, in which we are living in it's, uh, it's not an easy world it's a challenging world and for each and every life that comes here we lay it in the presence of the Lord so that the angel of God they support this life. Uh, we believe that uh, if God can take care of this life, uh, this life will be a success. We know it's not uh, the, the best parent is God. The first parent is God. The real parent is God. And when God gives us children, we are just parents on behalf of him so we are doing the work uh, that he is supposed to do god bless you brother blessing and sister shalom and uh, hey the, the little
little one is there, Anna. God bless you, Anna. <laughs> um, brother, do you have your Bible or someone has a Bible there? Okay. So, I had a sister told me that, Pastor, because of this song, we will have more babies. <laughs> <laughs> Say, okay, I will not get tired to pray for babies. <laughs> it's easier than preaching, so I will always enjoy it. You are welcome, sisters. It's good to have children when you are still young, you know. You don't wait when you get old, then you start planning how to get married and how to have children. So, are we there, brother? Oh, the Bible is being read from that side. We can start with uh, Psalm 127. Psalm 127, verse 3. Lo, children are an heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the whom is his reward. Yeah, you can read the next verse as well. As arrows are in the hand of a mighty man, so are children of the youth. Amen. Amen. Are we saying amen to that? Are we saying amen? Yes, children are an inheritance of the Lord. Amen. Let's take also Matthew chapter 17. Sorry, Matthew chapter 19. Sorry. I think it's 19 verse. Um, you can take verse 13 and come down to verse 15. Then were they brought unto him little children, that he should put his hands on them and pray. And the disciples rebuked them. But Jesus said, Suffer little children, and forbid them not to come unto me, for such is the kingdom of heaven. Amen. Amen. And he laid his hands on them, and departed them. Amen. Amen. So, through uh, these scriptures, we are welcoming this uh, life of the little William. His name is William. Okay, it's a name by inspiration. <laughs> uh, William Chiroa. We welcome this life. You know, we are not baptizing the babies because they have no conscience to, to repent because baptism is a consequence of repentance. But uh, we know that uh, a, a, a human life coming here on earth is recorded in the book of God. And uh, 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 God has a great plan for the life that he puts in our hands. You know, no matter how a child comes here on earth, life comes only from God. Amen. And our duty here, it is to stand as an army of God so that we can invite a deployment of an invisible army from heaven to come and surround the life that we have in our hands. And we pray that God will take this child and raise this child and take care of the family and control the mind, the structure, the architecture of the home where this life is going to grow so that this life can be a blessing for everybody. Now the parents bring the child here as a commitment that they make that God has given to us this little life 
and we understand that we cannot raise it ourselves we bring it to you god so that you can help us do it the best that we can and it's a commitment by bringing the child in the altar of god that uh, we will teach this child the ways of god the rest of his life we are going to take this child only to right places we will only bring right things to this child we will only bring to this child what will honor god and we will only take this child to the places which will honor god that's why the first time you want to have this child around you bring him in the house of god say god we are starting in your house because not that it's a one day dedication but it will be a whole life matter the life of this child will be dedicated to the lord that's what we are doing we are dedicating this life to the lord jesus christ for a life of service and in this child being still small he has no conscience whatever will happen to this life whatever will be put in his mind in his brain in his conscience will come from what the parents are going to do and that's a great responsibility that god has given to us when he say uh, through the prophets in the bible saying that what what i have given to you teach it to your children and tell them to tell to their children so that this heritage can pass from generation unto generation and we have a great responsibility from god so that the the word that he has given to us the experience that he has given to us we may pass it to our children and then we tell them also to tell their children that the lord has done so great for our lives amen praise the lord amen we're going to bow our head for a word of prayer our dear heavenly father the creator of heaven and earth the alpha and the omega the author of life the giver of life you are the one lord who said even to the prophet jeremiah even before you were formed in the womb of your mother i knew you and i ordained you to be prophet unto nations you who said through the apostle paul that before even the children were born before they did right or wrong that you loved one and you dislike the other one to show unto us oh god that it our coming here is not a surprise unto you even the coming of this baby is not a surprise unto you that it's a matter that was foreordained by you before the foundation of the world and we know oh god that even this morning the angels oh god the host of heaven are aware of this dedication we are bringing the little william unto you oh dear heavenly father you said forbid not these ones to come to me because the kingdom of god is for those who are like them we are coming with this little child lord our hands are just representing your hands you have blessed this little family you have blessed this couple with another life another responsibility oh god we say thank you for protecting the mother for protecting the home for making it able that we are here in your house thanking you for what you have done our prayer oh god is that you may receive this life in your capable hands we invite a deployment of the host of heaven to surround the life of this little william oh god for a life of great blessing may this life be a life of testimonies oh god days or nights whether parents are around or not 
may the angel of the Lord be around this life and protect it against all arrows of the enemy and protecting again all attempts of the enemy. I pray, O oh God, if there is any tomorrow, that this child force will stand for the right cause. May every spirit of this world, every spirit of rebellion, every spirit of stubbornness, every spirit of confusion that is paralyzing the minds of the people in this world may never affect this child in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. May this child lack nothing. May life be tender unto him. May you allow, O oh God, that the home where he will grow be a blessed home. Bless the parents. Bless the father. Bless the mother. Give them the wisdom and all that is needed as means for this uh, child to grow in happiness, to grow in blessings for the glory of your name. I believe, Father, that you are here as, as we are dedicating the little William in your capable hands in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for a life of blessings, for a life of service, for a life of happiness, and for a life of the glory of your wonderful name. It is in the mighty, in the powerful, and in the glorious name of the Lord Jesus Christ that we have prayed this morning. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Amen. God bless you. Also have an, an offering for a birthday request. It's okay, brother. The, the baby dedication is over. You can stop your song. Um, you, you, you wait when yours will come. Then we are waiting for you. Amen. Uh, happy birthday, Amela. God bless you. How old are you? 15. Wow, okay. <laughs> That's good. We thank God for the 15 years of um, Amela, of uh, Amela of uh, Armel. <laughs> so uh, the mystery is revealed today that uh, Amela is of Armel and... Uh, and, and Sarah, God bless you, brother and sister, for supplying us with so much tools in the house of God. Amen. Uh, you know, uh, these parents have raised their children in the ways of God, and now they are a blessing in the house of God. They are serving in the house of God. What a privilege, something to live and see in one's lifetime. And I'm happy, uh, you know, to see that happening here. And these children, we carried them. They were babies in our hands. And today they are serving the Lord. We indeed thank the Lord for that. Amen. Let us bow our head for a prayer. Heavenly Father, we want to pray. Uh, this morning for Amela, we know, oh God, it's such a great blessing to have her here. We can look back for the years that it has passed, Father, and we can count your blessings in the life of this little girl. How you have been, Father, surrounding this life in protection, in happiness, in all the supply, Lord. We appreciate you until this day. We have come also to join our hands, our voice, our hearts with the family, O oh God, and to say, Father, once again you have done it, and we come and say thanks unto you. Receive the glory and receive the honor forever and ever. Father, now we are looking forward for the coming years, which we lay again before you, praying, Lord, that you will continue sustaining this life, 
protecting this life, oh God, making things work according to your plan every day, Lord, and every year we want to continue praising your name. May this life be kept, O oh God, under the wings of the mighty eagle, our mighty angel, our mighty God. Protect Amela. Keep her, Lord, safe everywhere she is. I pray that the angel of the Lord committed to this life will continue, O oh God, in this great job. We appreciate you in everything as we give you all the glory and all the honor. And we take this thank you giving unto you and lay the coming years in your capable hand for more testimonies and more praises unto your name, more protections unto you from you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we have prayed. Amen. 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 God bless you. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Uh, now we can tend to the word. Uh, are we ready for the word of God? Amen. Amen. Let's take the few uh, minutes that remains uh, to allocate to the word. I don't know what is happening with my pulpit here. Is it a new style decoration or something is not in its place? Um, uh, maybe... Brothers, okay, can somebody come here and help me if everything is all right here? Um, I think um, I want us to take... Is this thing always like this? Oh, it's a new style. Oh, it's always like that. Okay, <laughs> that's fine. Um, are we together? Okay, are you ready for the word? Okay. Um, we will continue with something that uh, uh, we started last Sunday. I just wanted to skip it, but the spirit is, is holding me there. I don't know why. Maybe there was something that I was supposed to say that I did not say. Um, but I... I did not want to say everything about them, about this, because uh, I'm trying to put it together in a writing form, because I believe that uh, I want to have it and going back to it. You know, sometimes when we are speaking in a sermon, we, we just say things here and there by inspiration. But I think maybe when I put it in a writing form and, and it will be in a proper teaching way when somebody can come back to it every time he wants to do it so that it can help uh, someone's life, you know. The purpose why I am standing behind this pulpit, it is for your life to be changed. Amen. Amen. Uh, uh, you... The word of God has a power of transformation. And something has to happen to you as you are receiving the word of God. Amen. It is fine to say amen in the service. It's fine to enjoy the service. But it's best if this word can be applied in your life and bring a transformation. The greatest tribute that you will bring to the ministry, it is a change that takes place in your life. Amen. So let us take the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 2, verse 14, before I read also First Chronicle. We will read it even when we are sitting. Ecclesiastes, chapter 2, verse 14. <clears throat> That's where we're going to take our inspiration this morning. Are we all there? Uh, yes, Ecclesiastes 2, uh, verse 14. The wise man's eyes are in his head. Are you there? Are you there? The wise man's eyes are in his head, but the fool walketh in darkness. And I myself perceived that also that one even happened to them all. 
May God add blessings to the reading of his word. Let us say a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray that you'll speak to us this morning. You'll anoint our speech and you'll anoint our listening. May you help us to process all the instructions that come from you in this day and help us to be led in the path of righteousness for your name's sake. May this service be a blessing, a moment of change in the life of your children. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> Amen. This is the wisdom of the Bible that speaketh, that uh, the eyes of a wise man are... Amen. Amen. The eyes of a wise man are in his head. So a wise man looketh through from his head, but a fool does not use his head to look. And you know, uh, when I was trying to check, I realized that though the word um, we are speaking about the baptism of the brain. That, uh, as I was checking, that uh, the word brain is not much used in the Bible. Uh, actually, it's replaced by other words which uh, uh, gives the same concept. But um, when you go into the trans relation of them where it came from actually that word was used instead so and sometimes the word intelligence is used instead of brain sometimes the mind is used instead of brain and sometimes the heart as well is used instead of brain but that is the Bible concept because when the Bible speaks about the heart, it's not speaking about the carnal heart organ that you have in your body. It's not speaking about the one that pumps blood, but it's speaking about some dimensional spiritual being of yourself. Your soul is your heart. Amen. Because that is the other you. Amen. You receive the word of God in your heart. You receive it in your soul. Amen. That's where God lives. He lives in your heart. He lives in your soul. Amen. But we have, uh, I have, we have noticed something uh, here that um, most of the time, Christians, we have missed something very important. And this thing very important already, uh, the prophets highlighted it very hard sometimes in his sermon. I spoke about it in the demonology and I got it again when he was speaking about Israel and the church. And he said that um, people need their brains baptized beside their water baptism. So you have Beside your water baptism, you need the baptism of your brain. And if you have the water baptism and you don't have the baptism of your brain, you will have a problem somewhere. Now, I was speaking, I don't know, it slipped my tongue. The, uh, another time when we are talking with brothers, I think in a kind of fellowship, that I say, you know, God gives you, you can have a calling from God. God, you know, the calling comes from God, but manners, you must learn them. You know, it's not because you have the calling that you have the manners. No, the manners you need to learn. You know, you cannot pretend that uh, because I have a calling from God, then the rest will come on their own. It's not because you have a calling from God that you have, God has called you to be a doctor. God has called you to be an engineer. God has called, you know, it's also a calling from God to be an engineer, to be a doctor, to be whatever you can be in this life. But before you get there, you need to learn that. If you don't learn, you are not going to become. Even as I am preaching here, the gifts of preaching come from God. But if I don't study, if I don't uh, learn, if I don't read, I will never have enough material to produce to the people. 
Amen. Are we together? I cannot just say because I have the calling, then that's enough. You cannot just say because I have a gift of singing, that is enough for me. I just come and sing. You cannot just say because I'm a, I have a gift of being of playing music, I can just come and play. No, it doesn't work like that. With God, you must have another baptism, which is the baptism of your brain, which will help you to perform according to the abilities, the resources that God has placed in your life. Amen. That's why Solomon said, a wise man's eye are in his head. Amen. But the Christians, they have refused to use the heads of the brain. They totally think we need to be dependable. Are we together? We need to be dependable of what is in our hearts. While, amen, the distance between what is in your heart and the manifestation of it, you have to come through some process. Remember, there is nothing, amen, are we together? There is nothing that is promised to you that will take place unless it comes through a process. Amen. Amen. It cannot come to you unless it comes through a process. And many times we fail in the process. We want it to come. Amen. But remember God. God will never give us a finished product. There is no way. It's not in the plan of God to give you a finished product. God, amen. God never made the wine. No, God, amen, are you there? The wine is not made by God, it's made by men, amen. But the grape that makes the wine, it's a product of a tree that God has put here on earth. The seed was put by God, but a man had to take what God has made and process it so that it becomes, amen, it add value, hallelujah. I love to say that, that man has got a duty to add value to what God has done. Oh my, hallelujah. Even the desire in God to have a man was that to have somebody who is able to till the ground that I have made. I need somebody who is able to cultivate. I need somebody who is able to prune. Oh my. Remember there is a story in the Bible that Jesus speak about. Are you there with me? This is beautiful. The story Jesus speak about, he says uh, this man, he had, uh, the, he had a tree, the master. He had a tree and that tree was not giving fruit. And he said, no, 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 this tree must be removed. I have to cut it now because it's not even giving fruit. Amen. And one of the servants came and said, for, stand for the mercy of the tree and say, Master, can you give me a chance? I will take this tree, I will work around it. I will, the Bible says, I will prune it. I will remove whatever is blocking its growth. I will try to till the ground. Hallelujah. And then if it does not give fruit next year, then you are going to be a right to remove it. Hallelujah. And that master is God. Amen. And the servant is a man. God was a ready to remove the tree like God was ready to remove Israel but Moses stand in between and say no God you don't have to destroy them because they are your people he stood for the mercy of the people God needs somebody who can add value to the things he has done if you cannot do that you are not playing the role that God has placed you here now God is not expecting to have somebody who is waiting for everything from him like a finished product it will never come it will never come you are actually praying wrong like I was talking last time, you know, a bird does not pray for God to give him a nest. Never. He does not have to pray for that. To make a nest, I, the God has already put in him the resources. Like in you, God has already put the resources. 
if you use them wrong, that is about yourself. He is not God to be blamed. No one can blame God because God has already given to us all that is needed. Yes, we, we, we have to say amen to that until it starts working in us. I listen, there is a story in the Bible that um, the prophet Elisha met uh, uh, the king, I think it's the king Joash. Now, uh, this king came to the prophet because he wanted to go to the battle. There was a war with the Syrian and the king wanted to go for that war and he came to the prophet so that he can receive the word of the Lord, the anointing from God to go and have victory. And that's what we do as a Christian. You know that your life is more spiritual than it is natural. Amen. The backup of spiritual forces is so much needed for your life so that the ability that you have naturally can work to their best. The king went to the prophet. And the prophet told him that was the last prophecy of Elisha before he died. The, Elisha the prophet told him, bring an arrow and bring a bow. I think uh, it should be in the book of the second king. Uh, uh, second king, maybe chapter 13, somewhere there, at the end of the life of Elisha the prophet. He said, bring with you an arrow. Bring with you a bow. Then the king went and came with an arrow Alors, and came with a bow and said, okay, now you can Alors, open the window and shoot the, your, your, your arrow. The king opened the window le, le and pulled to shoot. You see, the king is a shooting. Amen. And the prophet prophesied, say, now this arrow has become the arrow of the Lord. Hallelujah. It was the arrow of the king. Now it's the arrow of the Lord. Do you know that what you have, it is of the Lord? Oh my. Let somebody understand that this morning. Amen. It was of the king. Now it became of the Lord. Now, the, then, then the prophet prophesied. And he told him that you are going to smite the Syrian. And you are going to destroy them completely. You are going to consume them. The Lord has given that to you. Amen. Amen. But the one who's pulling the arrow is not the Lord. The one who's pulling is the man. But the victory is from the Lord. But for the victory to take place, the man has to do something. Now, look what the prophet tells him. He tells him, say, take now your arrow and, 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 and hit it on the ground. Now, the king takes the arrow and hit the ground three times only. Then the king, the prophet, was so disturbed. He said, but why? If you only done it three times, because I did not say do it three times, I say just hit the ground, smite the ground with it, because the ground is the Syrian. You smiting the ground was showing how much you are going to destroy the Syrian. But because you only did it three times, then you are only going to destroy them three times. If you could have done it more times, you could have received more victory. So God already gave him the victory, but because he could only do as much. Oh my. And many times, what we receive is according to what we can do ourselves. Because you cannot do more than that. But the more is already given to you. Amen. 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 God has already given to you everything that you need. But all depends on how far you can go in fulfilling the word of God in your life. If God wanted Goliath to be down, 
He could have just sent a thunder from heaven and Goliath will die. But God does not do things like that. God still needs a man to come and to have some courage. He still needs a man to come and take a slingshot and still pull very hard and God come and enter in the, the, the stone until it will reach Goliath to go down. God is still expecting you this day to stand up and start making a step for your spiritual life. God wants you to make a step to go on your knees and pray. God wants you to make a step to take a song and sing. God wants you to take a step to open a Bible and read. God wants you to take a step to do something so that the next can take place. Hallelujah. Remember Joshua, he had to go in that river. Yes, the river was full. Yes, it was not the right season. Yes, the, the storms were there. Yes, the, it was a risk to be inside that water. It was in a, in a season where the river was in its best flow. It was very high. It was not easy for them to think of crossing that river at that moment. But someone had to decide to step in that water, to start walking in that water. Someone has to take the risk. Amen. God is waiting for you to take the risk. It's not about seeing a vision. Joshua did not see a vision. There will no one prophesy on him to say, now you can go in the river Jordan. No, he was inspired, knowing what God has spoken already through the prophet for his life. Then he decided to walk inside. And he told the priest, you take the word, take the, the box that contains the word inside on your shoulder and walk in that river. As they are walking in the river, the water was still there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The water was still there. They walked in the water. They walked until the water reached the level of their shoulder. And it was then they, they started even losing their balance. It, they could have just fought, but they continued. Amen. 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 God is expecting you this morning to make one more step. Even if you have not yet seen anything happening, you must make sure a more step is made. The devil is waiting for you to give up, but God is waiting for you to carry on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you give up, the only person who is happy is the devil. But when you carry on, you make God more happy. When you carry on, heaven is more happy. Hallelujah. Amen. Make one more step as you are here this morning. God is here to stand with you. Amen. Listen, when you are in trouble, God never promised he will remove the trouble. No, there's no promise like that. But God promised he will be there with you in that trouble. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The trouble is something very sweet because the product amen, is always wonderful. You cannot have wine unless you crush that grape. Amen. It's a mess to crush the grape, but it's wonderful to taste that wine. Hallelujah. If Jesus himself accepted, amen, he accepted to die at the cross, to go through all that, just because he wanted to have you. Can you imagine that? The death of the Lord Jesus Christ at the cross was just because he needed you. And you think you cannot suffer anything, then you are going on the wrong direction. If you think that the life of a Christian it will come in the best of easiness, then you will never get any experience with God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. I always say many times, you know, God, if you want, and, and unfortunately, God has no better way to train us 
than to put us in situations which are difficult. Oh my. Hallelujah. That's the only way God has to train us. He puts you in a situation that is difficult. Sometimes he puts you in a marriage that is difficult. Sometimes you don't want to say amen. Yeah, I'm saying amen. Uh, it's the word of God. Sometimes he puts you in a family that is difficult. Sometimes he puts you, amen. Amen. Sometimes he puts you in a working environment that is difficult. Sometimes he will always find a place how he can shape you. You know, you cannot shape that goal. You cannot make that goal to remove all the impurity unless you put it in that test of fire. You cannot, you need that, you need that sword, you need that knife so that you can shape anything that you want to get the right shape. You need a tool that is sharp. God must use it. But you must understand, it is that experience that will make you test good tomorrow. You know, people with no experience, you can easily spot that this person has got no experience. When they get a little blessing from God, the way they behave, the way they talk, the way they look at themselves, the way they consider themselves, you can just see this man has got no background, has got no experience with God. When they just receive a small taste of God's blessing, when God gives them a husband, God gives them a wife, God gives them a child, whatever God gives them that makes them happy, the way they behave, you can tell that these people, they have no experience with God. But God does not want to bless you before it's your time. God wants to bless you at the right time. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. You cannot receive the power before you get the character. You need that character. And God wants you to have that character. Then you will value the power. You will know what to do with what God gives you. It's because he's training you. And in that training of God in your life, that's when he comes to what we are talking about. That's when he work on your brain. That's where you work on the ability you will have to process things. Because you know in your brain that's where you process everything. That's where you process everything. What you talk. That's where you feel the pain. Do you know that you feel your pain in your brain? Amen. You feel your pain in your brain. That's, that, that pain killer that you drink to stop the pain which is on your leg. It does not go on the leg. It goes on your brain. To tell your brain that uh, undermine what is down there. From now, just turn your, your, your attention somewhere else. Then you don't feel the pain because the pain is actually there. I heard that the scientists, they say, a person who is stabbed by a knife feels the pain in his brain. The same as a person who suffer a trauma or a person who suffer an emotional pain. You know, you can just have a pain of an emotion. Maybe somebody said something. Just It's a say that a person said, but you feel the pain. Your brain does not make a difference between a knife and a word that was spoken to you. Because the pain comes from there. That's where you process it. And it's the same energy that you take out. But here, hallelujah, I want by the grace of God, somebody to be able to put his eyes right where his brain are. Right where you can be able to process things. Right where you can learn. Right where you can have everything that is needed because you are valued by what you are carrying inside there. Amen. Amen. Listen to what uh, Solomon says here. This is God speaking to Solomon in First Chronicle chapter 28. I believe I've got some few things I want to share with you. How many love the word of God? Amen. Let your heart be open and receive God's instructions for your life. God wants you to go through a change. I was saying the other time 
because Christians have skipped this uh, baptism of the brain, it has made them to only be professors. Yes, they are only professors. They are only confessing. But they cannot be able to manifest, to express what they are confessing. There is a gap, you know, that if a person, if an unbeliever has this brain baptism, he will achieve more than a Christian. And that's the problem. That's the reason why we see people, they are listening to the word of God. They say they believe because there is a difference between believing and saying that you believe. Amen. It's not because you say that you believe that you indeed believe. No, it's not a say, but it is an experience. It's the way you move. It's the way you act. It's the way you, hallelujah, it's the way you walk that proves whether you believe or you don't believe. Amen. It's not because you just say, I believe that you believe. No, it's not at all because of that. And we have seen many times that many Christians, they have come to church, they have listened to the word. Well, yes, we think they have listened to the word, but they are, there is nothing that is coming in their life in the direction of showing them the right place to be. Why? Because they have remained in a world of some fictions. They they think God is somewhere far, far there in heaven. Are you there? That God is somewhere far, far there in heaven. And is there giving them some instruction and waiting that if tomorrow come, he's going to open heaven and let some manna come down. And that is the concept that they have of God. Is somebody that one morning I will wake up and find that he has filled in groceries in my fridge. I will wake up and realize that uh, suddenly I receive a bank notification that because uh, you are a believer, now you've got uh, 10 million in the account. Uh, uh, God can do it, brother. No, God does not work like that. God does not operate like that. God has his principles. God has his norms. God is a loving God. And to show, to see how much he loves you, we look at what he has put in you. Look at what he has invested in you to see how much God loves you. Amen. Already the gift of life that you have this morning. Do you know how many people will wish to be here this morning and healthy and be able to listen to this word? There are many people who have prayed for this, but they did not have it. But by his grace, God gives you that ability to be here and listen to his word. Amen. God gives you the ability to walk. God gives you the ability to talk. God gives you the ability to have two bo both of your hands. And you cannot even put them together and clap for him. And you don't know that there are people who don't have them. And they have been amputated of their hands or whatever because of situations that they could not control themselves. The grace of God upon your life shows that God is expecting something from you. Hallelujah. Don't be that kind of Christian who pray, but they pray wrong. That's what Jesus said. The reason why you don't receive is because you pray wrong. That's the problem. You cannot blame God. It's you always. Whether you pray wrong or you don't take what God ask you to take, then you're never going to see the glory of God. That let the word of God be laid before you. Amen. Some believers are saying amen this morning. Amen. Get what the Lord will put in you. You know, the, the health of your body depends on the health of your brain. 
in a healthy mind is a healthy body. A wealthy mind is a wealthy life. There's no one who is poor unless he is poor in his mind. That's where poverty is. Poverty is not in your bank account. Poverty, because those ones are just life situations. It is not what you are. You are not your bank account. Since when you become identified with your bank account, something that you just opened two years back, now you are identifying yourself with that never, you are not the bank account, you are not the car, you are not, you are not that. Amen, what you are, amen, what, you, what a man is, is what he thinks. Hallelujah, somebody believes that this morning. Amen. If you believe that you are going to change your situation, you are going to change your life, you are going to realize this morning that what you will become tomorrow, you have it in your hands now. You can design it. You can drive it. The steering wheel of your life, God has put it in your hands that you can direct where you must be tomorrow. Hallelujah. And you are speaking to me of somebody who will be a Christian today and tomorrow is in the world. What is that? It does not exist in what I'm talking about. Because here I'm talking about somebody who has the hold, the holding, the staring, the guidance of his own life. No one will take it from you because God has already handed over to you the plan. He took the plan already and gave it to you. Say, now you have the full plan of your life. The calling of God for you. What you must fulfill. The purpose of God for your life. God has already gave it to you. How can you tomorrow step back again? No, we are here for an achievement. No matter what the enemy can do, you must believe. Hallelujah. You must believe. No matter what is your condition this morning, no matter how many downfall happen in your life, you must believe from this morning that you are on this way to never turn back. That you are on this way to be a great achiever. No matter how many mountains will come, no matter how many rivers before you, you will definitely make it on the other side. Hallelujah. Actually, Jesus told the disciples, Hallelujah. He told them, You get into that boat, I will meet you on the other side. Hallelujah. Amen. Say, so You get in there. Me, I am waiting on the other side for you. So when the storms start coming, Hallelujah. When the waves are shaking the boat, Hallelujah. Something should tell in their heart. He never told us we will sink. Hallelujah. Though he did no. not say the storm will come. Hallelujah. He did not tell us about the danger. He did not tell us about the trouble. But he told us he is waiting for us there. Hallelujah. Let the storm come. Let the wave shake your boat. But one thing is sure. He told you I will meet you on that side. Amen. Amen. Continue moving on. Continue, Continue. Make one more step. Hallelujah. That's my prayer this morning for your life. Say one more prayer. Make one more step. Wish one more thing. Something good is on the way for you. There is a great Christian life that is waiting for you. On the other side of all the storms that are happening, if things are not working right in your life, thank the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. If you were looking for a job and you did not get it, say praise God. I praise God for the job that I didn't get. I praise God for the money that I couldn't make. I praise God. I praise God. I know there is a better tomorrow for me. Thank God for your situation. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. 
I know if he refused the cross, I would have not been saved today. If he refused the suffering, I would have not been enjoying today. And I know also, hallelujah, if I don't go through this experience, I will not become the person he wants me to become. Hallelujah. God is working. Je Hallelujah. Travaille. Praise God. No matter how much mess is around your life, Peu say, tell to the devil, I am a work in progress. Hallelujah. It's a construction okay. site. Don't worry. One day the rubbles will be out. One day cleaning will take place. One day. Hallelujah. Amen. Change your mind. Change your perception of yourself. Change your name of yourself. Hallelujah. Praise God. I like people like Jacob who will say, I will not let you go unless you bless me. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Say, please, it's enough. The sun is rising. Allow me to leave. I will not let you go. Until you bless him. Hallelujah. He held God by his weak spot. He knew that God is not greater than his word. Hallelujah. Say, God cannot do beyond his word. He held him down there. Say, I'm not going anywhere until you bless me. Hallelujah. And the following morning, this man was walking differently. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Somebody say amen to that. Hallelujah. He came from a fight. He was an overcomer. He was walking differently. And hallelujah. And he had a different name. The name was changed. Oh, a different calling. He used to be called Jacob which was a liar, which was a supplanter. How can you not lie if you call yourself a liar? He was already called a liar. So that's why he had to do all that. He had to go through all those mischiefs because that was his name. But when God came, he said, what you need to change, hallelujah, what you need to change, the blessings that you need, it's a new calling for yourself. Call yourself differently. Somebody say amen to that. Give yourself a new name. Change your mind. Hallelujah. Amen. Bring all those imaginations that is not confessing the word of God. Bring them under your feet. They should no longer stand before you. God is here bringing you a new change, a new baptism. A change, hallelujah, a renewing of your mind, a brain baptism, hallelujah, which will wash away all your imperfections, hallelujah. You know why you're still subject to sin? It's because your mind is still there. Even if you stop it in your flesh, but if it's still in your mind, your flesh will, your mind will overpower your flesh. That's the problem. Your mind will always overpower your flesh because your mind has got more vibration power that will be able to go through your flesh and make your flesh weak. Yes. But if you can win the battle in your mind, that's the winner we are looking for. I am looking for a person who will talk differently from this afternoon. I need a person who will talk differently, who will call himself different, who will declare different things for his life who will no longer blame his background, but who will praise whatever happened in his past. Because if it was not for those valleys, hallelujah, if it was not for those wrong decisions, hallelujah, amen. 
Hallelujah. Because you know, sometimes God makes you learn a lesson by allowing you to make a wrong decision. You can blame yourself, I made a wrong decision, but God knew all that. He let you make a wrong decision. So that by the consequences of those decisions, you can learn the hard way. But when you have learned, hallelujah, you are a better person than you were then. The person that you are today, brothers, the person you are today, sisters, you are a better person than you were yesterday. Because you have learned, you know better. Hallelujah. And I believe that if you learn this, tomorrow you will come with a testimony. Hallelujah. The miracle of God, the miracles of God will no longer be something that you hear from somebody speaking. It will a testimony will not be something you have heard a brother saying, God has done this for me. Your life will become a testimony. Every moment of your life, you will say things, hallelujah. You will experience things that people will never understand how it got to you. But let me tell you, all those things that are coming to you are already in you. They are already in you. When you have a seed of a tree, hallelujah, that seed that you have, it's the tree, it's the branches, it's the leaves. Everything is in that small seed. You just need to give it time. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible says them who were building, hallelujah, they rejected that cornerstone. They rejected it. Why? Because when they look at it, it was not giving the impression that it is something important. Now, when they look at it, as, as it came in their hands, they look at it, they say, no, it does not even look nice. It does not even look strong. It does not even look that it will make our building better. Then the builders, they took it. They throw it away. But as they moved, they realized that the stone that was rejected by the builders has become the principal. And that's what always happened in our lives. But I'm here this morning, I'm standing here to tell you, to make sure that you never miss what God has put in your way. If you say amen, let it be so for your life. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. First Chronicle, verse 28, chapter 28, verse 9. This is a God, a, 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 a true, a, 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 a man. Are we together? This is God speaking to Solomon. He said, ah, and thou, Solomon, my son, know thou the God of thy father, and save him with a perfect heart and with a willing mind. Hallelujah. 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 Am I talking to somebody? Oh my, may God help us. Now, you see, this is God speaking to Solomon. And Solomon, you know, is the greatest example in the scriptures of what God can do. Hallelujah. He's the example of prosperity. He's the example of success. He's the, hallelujah. Is the example of what God can do. God gave him the kingdom. You know, when he says, God gave you the kingdom. Hallelujah. And God is here to give you the kingdom. Oh my. Is it not what God has spoken to you? Say, little flock, it was the good will of your father to give you the kingdom. Hallelujah. He has made us kings. Hallelujah. He has made us priests. He has made us. We just have to exercise our ability. 
We have to exercise our God-given position. When God has given to you, hallelujah, when God has given to you a place, when God has given to you a position, that has nothing to do with the political happenings. I don't know if someone get it. I, I need to find out how to put it in your heart. What God has given to you does not depend on the location where you are. It does not depend on the politics. It does not depend on the, the budget of next year of this country. God is not giving to you according to that budget. God is giving to you according to your relationship with him. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Are we together? When God say, I have given to you the power, it, it is not the power of the army of this country. It is the power that has come from him. And no matter what the surrounding can do, you know what God has given to you, there is no man here. There is no power. There is no institution that is able to remove it. Yes. Yes, yes. Let me say it again. What God has given to you, there is no institution. There is no power. There is no government. There is no constitution. There is no man given whatever that can take it away from you. When God has given it to you, it is yours. It belongs to you. No matter what comes, what go, it is yours. Just wait for that time. You work, work toward it. Hallelujah. Put your step on the right place. Test the ground all the time. A wise man's eyes are in his head. Hallelujah. Do something about it. Go for it. Fight for it. The victory is already on your side. When David was going against Goliath, he said, you are coming to me with your experience, with your power, with your strength. But I am coming in the name, hallelujah, of the Lord of Israel. I know that the victory belongs to me. I know that, hallelujah, the end of the story will be that your head will be down here. Oh, my, 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 my. Hallelujah. Can somebody receive it this morning? Can somebody take it for himself this morning? Hallelujah. Say what you will be tomorrow. It does not depend on what the world says. It does not depend on what your family says. It does not depend on what education says. What you become tomorrow depends on what? Hallelujah. God is laying in your heart now. God is writing in you a new book. He's writing in you. A new, hallelujah, a new life is writing in you, a new future. You just have, hallelujah, to exercise the power that God has put in you. They say to Solomon, he say, oh my, hallelujah, amen. Know thou the God of thy father, amen, and serve him, the God of thy father. Amen. And the father of Solomon was David. Yeah. Hallelujah. And David showed faithfulness unto God. Hallelujah. After he has conquered. Oh my, I love that man. After he has conquered. After he received his first anointing. Amen. He received his seven anointing. He received his third anointing. And he was sitting on the throne of Israel. Hallelujah. And he said, the Lord has brought all my enemies under my feet. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. And when he sat on the throne and he sees the privilege that God has given to you and he came back to God and said you are the Lord who took me. Hallelujah. Amen. From the back. The back. Hallelujah. Well, as I was a shepherd, you took me from there and put me on the throne. He knew that whatever he was, he was not his own merit. It was what God has done for him. Say, so even when I slew my enemies, it was not the power of my sword. It was not the strength of my hands. It was the Lord who gave to me those enemies. 
Hallelujah. Does it mean he did not train from the battle? No. He went to train from the battle. He went to sharpen his uh, weapons. He did all that he could do to fight the battle and win. He praised, he sing, he danced before the battle because he knew that the Lord, hallelujah, has placed those abilities in him. But after he won, he said, it's not my strength. It's not my wisdom. But it is the Lord who gave to me my enemies. Hallelujah. That's a man who has an experience with God. You see, a man who was shaped by God. A man that God took from nothing. A man that was rejected. A man that was even uh, not considered by his own home. They did not even want to count him among the boys who de uh, deserved the crown. Uh, and, uh, and then he was not called to the table. When the prophet was there to anoint a king, David was not called by who? By his own father. He did not call him, but God called him. Oh my God. Oh my God. Hallelujah. And God loved this man. And he said, this man is a man after my own heart. He's a man after my own heart. Oh, can God say that to me? Oh, I will live a happy life. Let me not have anything of this world, but just hear that from my God. It's a man after my own heart. Hallelujah. Say, so be careful. Don't touch that man. He's a man after my own heart. God was the advocate of David. God was the supporter of David. God was the fan of David. Oh, can God become your fan? Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, like today, we will say God was a follower of David. Amen. Yes, God was his follower. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. He said, remember the God of thy father and serve him with a perfect heart. Yes, but the willing in your mind. Are you there? Are you there? Am I talking to somebody? Say, be careful. Not only your heart must be perfect, but you must have a willing mind. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A mind that is making things to move. Yes. A mind that is, is, is making things to happen. You know, like they say, you know, in this world there is three categories of people. The people who are leading this world, they don't even make 1% of the population of this world. But they are leading the world. They are not even making a 1% of the people, but they hold the wealth of the world. Even when they tell you that uh, the, uh, the financial year, this year we will, we will use so much billion. You think that billion will come in your pocket? No, it's not for you. There are people already who are going to benefit that money. They are doing it for them. Yes. Why? Because they have put themselves in the place where they don't they are not there to wait for things to happen. Are you there? Are you there? They are not there to wait for things to happen. They are not even there to watch things happening. No, but they are there to make them happen. They, they are the ones who are cooking it. You, you, you know, are, are we together? Are we together? No, we, we, you are not there. You, oh, God, can you come? God, can you do? God, can you do? God is not your boy. That you can send God do this, God do that, God do that. No, that's not God. God is the master. God is the master. He, we don't send him to go do things for us. He requires us to do things for him. And we have to do what God has put in our hands to do. Because he has already laid so much resources in us. He said last time, the brain God has put in you. Oh my, so powerful. So powerful. 
so powerful, your brain, which can record three million one-hour videos and store them, stock them in your brain. But how, how, how can you go and fail a one-hour exam while you have a brain of a three million hours? <laughs> capacity, capacity to store things it's only one reason you refuse to acknowledge the resources that God has placed in you you accept it that ah, we'll see how it works when we get there the prophets say I don't like people who are like that who say let's just go we'll see what will happen no, he say real men have a vision. Hallelujah. So I want a man who will die for a vision. Hallelujah. Even if he does not reach it, his children will get there. If they don't get it, his great-grandchildren will get there. Because what values a man is the vision that he has. You know, there's a man in America that was called Abraham Lincoln. He was one of the great presidents of America in the century before the last century. See, that man was from a poor family. Like many of us, we, we bank on that. You know, my family is poor. Who tells you you must be poor because your family is poor? Where is it written? Who says that? But someone has placed it in your mind. And you have repeated it so many times. Until everything you do is no longer working. Because you set a standard in you. That you are from a poor family. And that standard, even when you forget, but your brain does not forget. It's written there. It's written there. But this morning, we are here to reverse the order. Wrap it off. No more. Put something. My father is rich. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Oh, me. My parents, the mm. only thing they left with me was dead. No, who are your parents? No, your no. life here is not from a man. You are born by the will of God. It's God who opened his heart. He opened his heart to begot you. And you are a begotten son of God, not born by the will of man, but the will of God has gave birth to you. Whatever route you came here, it was God using. It was God using. It was God using. Until you stand here, even this morning, even this afternoon, it is God talking to you, shaping you, making you to stand, reminding you who you are. Say Abraham Lincoln. His, his brother Branham speaks about this story. Say Abraham Lincoln was born from a poor family. His family could not afford his education. Yes, it's normal. You don't blame your parents because they could not afford their, your education. They did what they could do. You praise them for what they could do. That's all they could do. Do you think it's easy to raise a child? Hey, wait when you have your own. Then you will talk again. You know, many people, they talk when they are not there. They think it's a book. To raise a child is not a book. <laughs> it's a serious experience. When you get there, you know, many times people respect their parents when they become parents. Then they realize, eh, I did not sleep the whole night because this child was crying. So it means my parents also were not sleeping. Then they start realizing these people were important only when you go through that experience. What your parents did, it's what they could do. They did their best. You thank them for that. Praise them for that. Honor them for that. They did what they could do. There is nothing to blame from them because they did what 
was in their ability to do. Now it is you that might take it from where they left it. Where is the place of God in your life that it takes you in the journey? Don't be like the people of this world. This one blames the politicians. Those one blames the teachers. The teacher blames the children. This one, everyone blames somebody. A Christian is not a blame giver. A, a, a Christian is a solution giver. Bring me the solution. Don't bring me who you are blaming. No, you are, there is no one to blame. My life is in my hands. Now where I am, without education, without that, without that, but with God, what can I achieve from here? Actually, it has never been late for you to have a master degree. As long as you are alive, you can have it. Even if you are 70 years old, brother, Mr. Trump became president at 70 years old. How come? You think you are old. There's nothing that you have missed. You can catch up with everything. With God with you, nothing is impossible. Someone believe that this morning. Someone believe that this morning. Hallelujah. I feel like something is happening now. Hallelujah. I feel like there's a change that's taking place in somebody. God gave us this word to change our lives. Amen. I said it last time. When God sent a message, that message answered the question of the day. It answers the situation in which the people are living in. And this is the answer for you. Amen. Amen. This man, Abraham Lenkol, his parents could not afford his education. But one day, the book of Abraham Lenkol say he stood by, by the harp there. And he was standing there and he saw how a black man was being sold. Ah, just like a, a, a simple consignment, a good, just like a merchandise, they were giving it against money. So he stood there. He was not black himself. But when he looked at that, something said in him, I am going to stop this. Oh my. Without an education, with a poor family, without a background, but in his heart, he said, I'm going to stop this. One day, it could take time, it can take years, it can take centuries, but one day, I'm going to stop this. So I like a man with a vision. I like somebody who can take a decision and start working every day. There is one thing you must never do in your life. It's to waste your time. Because there is something that you'll never have more. It's time. You'll never have more time. Amen. Today when you hear his voice, harden not your heart. Now, today, this man started making a move. He started finding, making his way. He started going left and right with no education, with no background. But one day, hallelujah, oh my, I felt like having tears when the, the prophet is speaking about this man as he's passing through a cemetery. He found a black man just facing the tomb of uh, Abraham Lincoln and he's crying he's crying before the tomb of Abraham Lincoln and he said this man saved my life this man make me feel that I'm a human again this man make me feel, make me free again because Abraham Lincoln one day became the president of America without a background he made his way and he was there because he had a vision. He rather died but for that vision. He had to fulfill it. And he got there. And when he got there, he said, this is the time now. And he brought against the business of the country, against the economy of the country. He took a bold decision. He said, tomorrow morning, at the rising of the sun. Hallelujah. Praise God. Every man, 
who will see the sun rising tomorrow must declare himself free. Hallelujah. When you see the sun rising, it's time for your freedom. And you see the sun rising. Hallelujah. Now, it is the rising of the sun. Amen. It was the natural sun for a natural freedom. But here, we have the Son of God. Hallelujah. The Son of God is rising to break all the chains around our life. Something in us must work toward that. Hallelujah. Say, declare yourself free. They sound the trumpet of freedom. And these people were free. Hallelujah. Amen. And because of that, Abraham Lincoln was killed. He died. But his vision was fulfilled. I rather have somebody who dies, but his vision is fulfilled. No, it's not somebody who is intimidated by anything that happened around. Not somebody who is intimidated by failures. Not somebody who give up because something did not work. Because somebody said something. Brother, the vision in your heart is so hard, is so strong, brother, so big. It cannot be affected because somebody said something. Because I heard this. Because someone does not love me. Heck, do I care? Do people love me or don't love me? Where is my problem? I cannot put love in the people. Hallelujah. The only thing I care for does God love me. Is God with me? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh my. How many billions of people are in this world? Can you imagine that all these people love you? It's not possible. There will always be someone who will dislike you. Someone who will speak bad about you. Someone who will downgrade you. Someone who will belittle you. No matter how good you will behave. No, you cannot impress the world. You need to just make sure that God is with you in the room. Hallelujah. I thank him when he's with me in the room. Hallelujah. Even if you are dead, if he's with you in the room, you are going to resurrect. Hallelujah. Like when he took everyone out of the room. Hallelujah. Because the young lady was dead inside. Say, everyone must go out. Sometimes when people, God is taking people out, it's because they can't believe. They can't believe. What do you want God to keep them in? Sometimes you must, you must, hallelujah. Are you with me? Sometimes you must face that life alone. Sometimes you must walk that path alone. Sometimes you don't need a friend. Can you say amen to that? Yes. Sometimes you don't need someone to encourage you. Sometimes you don't need someone to say a good story to you. Sometimes you just need to be alone. But make sure he's there with you. Amen. I always say I'd rather lose everybody. I'd rather lose all friends. I'd rather lose all support but be with him. Than every, having all the support of the world, having all the friendship of the world, but be without God. It does not help me anywhere. It does not give me any good to be without God, but to have the rest of the people. But if I can be without everybody, but have God, oh, from the ashes in which I am dwelling, the God is able to make a new world. Hallelujah. Can you imagine that this world came from a chaos? Do you know that? Genesis say the world was void without any form. It was a chaos. But from that chaos, God was there. He came close to the chaos. Hallelujah. He overshadowed the chaos. Hallelujah. Oh, let me say one thing to you this morning. Can I prophesy to your life? May God overshadow 
the chaos around your life. Que Dieu puisse éclipser tous les let him overshadow your life. Oh, let him communicate to you all the wealth that is needed for your life to be happier. Let him communicate to you all that is needed for you to prosper. Make a step and walk. Have your brain matured. Can you start working this morning and God will give you all your heart desire. May God bless you. Let me hold it there. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's give him another hand of praise. Oh, man. Somebody is taking a step this morning. Somebody is going to make it. Another, a more walk this morning. Make one more step. The Lord is waiting for you. On the other hand, He is there. He's waiting for you at the end of the tunnel. Oh God. He's coming there. Can you feel? Can you feel something? Yes, brother, you can carry on with the music. Can you feel something is coming? Yes, it's coming. It's coming, it's coming. It's coming. Yes, Elijah told Gehazer, he says, go look, look very well. What do you see? He said, I see nothing. He said, go look again. There must be something there. There must be something. It's dry, it's dry, it's dry. He said, look again. He said, yes, I can see now. There is a hand. Just like a hand, there is a cloud. There is a cloud there. He said, yes, I can hear. I hear the freshness. The freshness of great water, great rain coming. Oh, thank you, Lord. Have your hands up. Allow that to come in your life. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. He's the master of the winds. He's the maker of the rain. Hallelujah. When the storms, they come around my life, I don't bank on that. I don't cry on that. 
But I rise my head and look up for my deliverance because I know what my God has called me for. I know, hallelujah, the vision the Lord has placed for my life. I know the purpose he has laid before me. Oh, I know that he has told me that I will serve him with a perfect heart, with a willing mind. I will make his word into action. I will carry the tabernacle of the manifestation of his word. I will make his word to become real in my life. Oh, yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus Christ. I know you are the master this morning. I know. Oh, yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus Christ.
give him praise. The master of the rain, the maker of the rain. He calmed the storms. He made the sun to shine. Oh, when clouds are surrounding your life, when trauma is surrounding your life, Oh, when pain is surrounding your life. Oh, when you can no longer see the way forward. I know somebody who is specialized in the things that others cannot do. He is the master of the winds, the maker of the rain. They say, I will meet you on the other side. Oh, he never said you are going to sink, but he said you are going to make it down. Let his process bring you to his promise. Let whatever is happening in your life brings you to your God's given purpose, like he did for Joseph. Yes, he was in the prison. But the prison made a way for the throne. Even if you are in a prison of a situation this morning or this afternoon, remember, if the prison of Joseph took him to the throne, the prison of your situation can rise you to your God's given purpose for your life. God is waiting for you. He wants to see your attitude this morning. He wants to see your willing mind. He wants to see how much you can make another step for your life. Whoever you are this morning, I don't know how, what is the situation in your life, but God knows the situation in your life. Whatever issue is holding you down, God brought this word, word here this morning. God brought this message here so that he can help you stand up. So that he can give you extra strength. He can give you extra legs. And he can give you extra energy that you can be able to stand from the ashes that are around your life. To define a new a new life for yourself a new tomorrow for yourself a new life of God in you there is God's life in you oh that you need to water this morning you need to prune around this morning so that that life can bring forth the fruit in abundance yes you have been taken, you have been destroyed. But as you were being destroyed, God allowed that because he knew that you might be a grape that must produce again a wine. Though you were in trouble, though you were, you were being shaken, God allowed the shaking to take place. Because he knew, oh my, he knew that the tree, the fruits are now ripe. The tree must be shaken so that the reaper can collect the fruits on the ground. God wanted to make it easy for somebody. Then he started working through your life. He wanted to make it easy for me. Then he started working through the life of the Lord Jesus. And this afternoon, I put my hand up and say, thank God for your sacrifice. Thank God for your cross. If it wasn't for the cross, I would have not been here. It is because of your pain that I'm able to stand again. Yes. It was not, if it was not because of those suffering, you would have never be chosen for a crown. The crown is waiting for you. 
the crown is here for you because you stood the battleground. Yes, you have been able. You have been able. Thank you, Jesus Christ.
what should I say of these things? If the Lord be for us, who shall be against us? What shall I say of these things? The Lord has chosen this moment to come and visit your life. Yes. Oh, I can say through all this, I have learned to trust in him. Through all these mountains, I have learned to trust in Jesus. Yes, the Lord is coming to give me a new mindset. He's coming to give me a new spirit. He's coming to give me a new brain. He's coming to make me actually use the brain that he put in me. An ability to process. An ability to think. An ability to say what is positive of myself. I'm calling myself a new name this morning. I'm giving myself a new attribute this morning. Oh, it's a new life this morning. I will say what the Lord has done. What he has planned. What he has put down for my life. Oh, thank you, Jesus Christ. Thank you. He is here for you. He is here for me. May his presence provide unto you whatever you have been expecting. No matter what is your condition. No matter what is your situation. If your business went down, the Lord is here to take you up. If your family is falling apart, the Lord is here to put things together. Oh God, if your job is not moving forward, the Lord is here to restore your life. Hallelujah. Renewing your mind, giving you a new life, a new spirit, a new thinking, a new way of approaching things, a new baptism. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I thank him for doing it. I thank him for his hand is not short. He's going to reach you this morning. Wherever you are, his hand is going to reach you. His hand is going to reach you. service with a word of prayer. The Lord has done so much in our lives. He has shown his love. He has shown his power. He has shown his hand. We are leaving this place different people. Different mindset. I believe the Lord is going to express through you the plan that he always has for this season. Tomorrow will not be like yesterday. It will be better. For this, let's move you forward. For you know now that you are not the failure that you thought you are. 
the evil has made you to doubt your ability. But God has come back to tell you, you are not a failure. The situations have failed you, but you are a son, a daughter of God. You have an inheritance that was left unto you from the heart of God, deposited in your heart. You are the place where God has put all the treasures. And you are more than a conqueror. You can possess the land around. You don't depend on the surrounding. You don't depend on the mood of the people. You don't depend on the say of the people. The Lord has made a way for you. Thank you, Jesus Christ. I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God. Through it all. Through it all. I've learned to depend upon Jesus. Dear gracious Heavenly Father, oh Heavenly Father, we thank you. For, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for your love and care over us, oh Heavenly Father. Truly we can say and sing in our hearts, oh God, we learn to depend upon your word, oh Heavenly Father. Such a wonderful word, that it helps us in our life, oh God. That shows us and gives us direction, that transforms us, oh Heavenly Father. Oh, Gunungulo Namanda, we are grateful, Gosa Namanda, that we can stand this moment and see no other moment in which we can live in but now. In this service, oh Heavenly Father, oh glorious God, how wonderful is thy works, Gunungulo Namanda, through thy mighty word, oh Heavenly Father. We thank you for your servant, oh Heavenly Father, which you have placed before us. Help us, Gunungulo Namanda, as we try to understand these things, as we are learning these things, Gunungulo Namanda, to treat him better, to to pro, to pro, oh Heavenly Father, to manifest these things, Gunungulo Namanda, that has been spoken in this pulpit, oh Heavenly Father. Help us, Gunungulo Namanda, to treat one another better, Gosa Namanda. Oh Heavenly Father, open our eyes of our minds, Gunungulo Namanda, that we may see your glory, oh Heavenly Father. Help us, Gunungulo Namanda, give us again this opportunity, Gunungulo Namanda, as we come in your word, Gosa Namanda, saying, Heavenly Father, these trees which we are, Gunungulo Namanda, give us another opportunity, and we shall do better, Gosa we shall till it, we shall work oh, we shall stay conscious we shall take this word and we shall never let it go oh, heavenly father oh we want a transformation now this moment oh heavenly father we don't want it tomorrow we don't want it another second, another hour oh heavenly father but now oh heavenly father may this transformation be our lives oh heavenly father oh for we love you oh Oh, glorious God, how wonderful is thy works. You have chosen us from the mats, the different places we have come from. You have gathered us here, oh, Gunungulo Namada, to speak these wonderful words. And we are very thankful and grateful, oh, Heavenly Father. Help us, oh, Heavenly Father, to take these things, Gunungulo Namada, and make it our things, Gunungulo Namada, and make it our life, oh, Heavenly Father. Oh, Father, we thank you for this service. We thank you for one another. We thank you for the musicians. We thank you for the band. We thank you for each and every brother who plays his role, each and every sister who stand in their duty, oh Heavenly Father, we thank you for all the good things that you do for us. Heavenly Father, as we are living now, going to our respective homes, oh Heavenly Father, may we carry this light, oh Heavenly Father, how the prophet speaks about Jesus and say he came in his lifetime and manifest everything that has been spoken about him. Oh Lord, may we also go and light everything that this service, this service has spoken about us, oh Heavenly Father. We want to light these things, that we may become a manifestation to become so close to you, oh Heavenly Father. 
Heavenly Father. Oh, Uncle Senna Mother, that our light may shine. Oh, Uncle Uncle, even to surprise us ourselves of who we are, Uncle Uncle Luna Mother. Oh, Father, we thank you. We give you the glory, the honor. Oh, Uncle Uncle Luna Mother, you are so wonderful in our lives, oh, Heavenly Father. There is none like you, Uncle Senna Mother. No one else, Uncle Uncle Luna Mother, someone that does the things that you do. Oh, Heavenly Father, we thank you. Oh, you deserve the glory. You deserve the honor oh, for who you are, Ngunukulona Mata. As we are going to our respective places, oh, Father, may you walk with us, Ngunukulama. May we keep in remembrance who you have made us. You have made us priests and kings. May we stand for our neighbors as priests. May we stand for the people close to us, Ngunukulama, our relatives, our families. Oh, Ngunukulama, as kings, may we decide, Ngunukulama, so much decisively according to this word, Ngosena Mata, and live a life, Ngosena so much that will manifest your glory. And we are very thankful for one another. Bless us, O oh, Heavenly Father. May we go with us through the weeks in our works, in our schools, and our duties, and go send a month in our businesses. Heavenly Lord, may your hand always shine upon us. May your countenance shine upon us, O oh, Heavenly Father. May your blessings be upon us, O oh, Heavenly Father. In the precious name of our Lord and Savior, we have prayed for. We know no other name that has the power to manifest all that we ask in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's give him a better hand of appreciation. Our Lord is so good, so wonderful, it's so nice to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. We are living this place different people. We thank him for being here, for being in the room with us this morning. We thank his presence. We thank him for his word and especially his hands of power upon our lives. Amen. We thank God we have received our heart desire. Somebody can say amen. I have received my heart desire. I am a different kind of person. I am a new person. All is well. Praise the Lord. Brother Tandile, maybe you can dismiss us with a song till we meet again. Shalom. Just as you greet somebody next to you, say God bless you. It was good to be in the house of the Lord with you. You have enjoyed to see the Lord to see the Lord blessing us through his word. Amen. It was so good to be here. We're just going to praise him as we are marching out. Thank God. Shalom.
Oh yeah. 